Okay, part two, the actual action button part. <laughs> we spent most of the time the last time around talking about this toggle button, so I didn't really get to the press me. The Well, the action button happened a little bit. Um, let's see, do I need a separate action button? I don't know. I think maybe that was okay, but let's do something a little bit more interesting with the action button just in case. All right, just in case, because now it uh, didn't really feel like it accomplished much of anything. So the action button got pressed, and nothing really happened. It did this look around. It said, oh, it's dark, or you can see something here. All right. So let's say, all right, well, what should happen? Uh, maybe we have something exciting. We could say, oh, if distance, or if vector2 distance, and well, distance between what? Now, the thing that moves around potentially is we have, well, the object that we're on, potentially, right? If distance, and it would say transform dot position, okay? That's going to be the first thing, transform dot position. And then we want to compare it to what is the thing that we're comparing it to. Now, uh, did we have it sound to play? That was our other object, right? That's the sound to play. So we'll say, all right, um, we'll, we'll put uh, sound to play. That's another game object, dot transform, dot position. OK. So that is saying if that is less than 10 or less than 5, say we could do something special in this case if we looked around and we were on here's our action we could say um, watch this ready and I'm going to add to the text here plus and say slash n that gives me a new line you are say plus and let's see we'll go ahead and we'll use a temporary variable here we'll say int no float dist and you're gonna say dist equals that okay and we're gonna say you are dist away from the sound. All right. So now, in this case, we've already connected the buttons and so on. But we can do something, hopefully. Let's see. And press me. Oh, I'm pretty close to the sound. So let's go to the scene to see this. So let's see. OK, here's the sound. And here is the game manager. Oh, OK, there's the game manager. There's the sound. So let's go ahead. Let's move that sound further away just to see what happens. All right, move it over there, move it way over here. Go back to the game. Press. We have two remaining. OK, I can't, I'm using up my chances here, but it's not doing anything useful because I'm too far from the sound. If I was closer, if I'd moved around, say, if my game manager, my movement script had brought me, mm, you know, there, and that's not close enough to hear it, maybe. But it would tell me that, OK, right? Now, I'm not going to get too fancy, but you could do things like say, ah, OK, what is the difference between x and the difference between y? You could tell the player, ah, you are 2 meters south of the object and 3 meters west of the object, if you wanted to tell them where they were when they hit that action, something like that. You know. So you could, you could get closer, and I'm going to leave that to, you know, to your discretion. Um, you don't have to get too fancy, but I'm going to leave some room in there for people who want to kind of stretch their programming skills, perhaps. Okay. 
So these are the sort of things, you, you know, it's, it's really, it's up to you. I'm leaving it kind of open-ended because this isn't game design, but it's game programming. So now you have all of the pieces to say, oh, okay, now I can do something interesting. Okay, I can have some state, I could have potentially multiple buttons, I could have hidden objects that are only visible when you're using your radar. Um, you know, maybe there's a sound that's only playing when the set, when the, uh, this button is toggled, perhaps. Right. So use your imagination a bit, right? These are just the building blocks. Now I do want you to use your imagination. You're not going to be, you know, too penalized <laughs> or not really penalized for how good the quality of your game is at this point, but it's really, you know, just use your imagination to come up with something that kind of exercises these in a interesting way. All right. So my little prototype was, oh, I'm in a room, I'm locked in a room, there's a gate and the, there's ocean outside. And I know that somewhere in the room, there's a, a, a key that radiates some magic warmth. And I can use the toggle to turn my flashlight on and off so I can see my overall location so I don't get too lost in the room. You know, I can kind of figure out where I was. So if I hear the sound, I could turn on the uh, toggle to see, oh, OK, now I know where in the room the sound is. Right, so I know I can come back to that. I can. I don't have to just remember where it was and search blindly. Right, so through some some uh, use of that field, I can, you know, make the game interesting or, or add some strategy to it that is accomplished by using that uh, that toggle or that action. Okay, so good luck with that. Be creative and demonstrate that you understand the techniques.